I just wanted to know, the UK government is giving a loan to Uganda of uh, 90 million euros, and uh, Nexus Green, you're the implement of the project, uh, that is solar irrigation. I just wanted to know how many farmers are going to benefit from this project. It's a good question. So we're doing up to 687 sites, and each site potentially on average could benefit up to five to six farmers. Um, and then in turn, it could benefit over 100 people in those communities. And then, so um, in implementation, Uganda has several regions that suffer from dry spells. How are you ensuring that each of the region benefits from that? So in this particular project, we're actually spreading it equally across the whole country. So the target is to get around about 3,000 sites across the whole country as pilots to demonstrate how successful solar irrigation is um, for the farmer to really benefit from. Um, so we're starting with 687 sites based on the fact that we average each site to be around about 140 to 150,000 euros per site. So if uh, you have, uh, like say for example, Uganda has uh, the, the bigger section of the agricultural sector, especially the people who are involved in farming, they are peasants. How affordable would that be for a common farmer out there? So solar irrigation um, is really beneficial in terms of the capex being the initial investment looks high, but the return on the investment is really quick. For example, Makono site uh, that we demonstrated, um, the payback on that would be one and a half years, and then it's just continuous. You've paid off the, the, the kit, which consists of the solar uh, array, the panels, the irrigation pump, the guardhouse, the fencing, the aggregate, so the whole turnkey would actually be paid back in one and a half years. In some places in Uganda where you'd want to target these farmers, you find there is no access to water. In fact, some of the streams, they dry up completely during the dry spell. So how do you intend to access water? So for this particular project, we are going for sites that are already existing in terms of the borehole already exists. But what we do as, at Nexus Green is we actually go and do feasibility studies on the sites. So what does that mean? It means we test the water yields, we test the quality of the water, and we actually see if that site is still capable of pumping water out from the ground, from the borehole. What are the, are the other benefits that uh, farmers can uh, uh, so tap great into? Question. Great question, because the value add from solar irrigation is so vast. So, for example, farmers are able to do more than just what they're originally doing today in conventional irrigation. They're able to increase their yields, um, being able to diversify in other um, products, if you will, because now with solar irrigation, you've got a, a water tank. So now you're not having to worry about when the, it's going to rain. So you're able to do more things throughout the year. So what the farmers and what we're trying to encourage the farmers, especially with uh, using agronomists, is to look at the value, you know, the high value crops, where they can really make some really good, uh, sustainable commercial uh, um, income. Um, we found some farmers are converting water into drinking water using UV machineries. Um, the extra crops that they're, they're creating, they're gonna be processing those and actually packaging, and we, from a Nexus Green standpoint, a UK company, we would love to see Ugandan products coming to the UK packaged in Uganda and sold to the UK as a Ugandan product because for my personal opinion um, the avocados here are the best avocados I've ever tasted in my life. We would love to see that in the UK. Other than the avocados which takes over five years to mature or put a, a fruit on. Have you tried to find out what are some or let the people know Absolutely. of what exactly should be grown that has a, a ready market in the UK? Massively. So again, it goes down to the behaviour of, the, of the, the farmer and the site. And again, with agronomists, it's their job to speak and really help the farmer develop those skill sets on grow this, this particular time of the year. This is what you're going to benefit and how you're going to benefit from that kind of product, if you will, or that crop. So I think working with our agronomists at Nexus Green, you'll find that the farmers will get that extra knowledge so that, you know, that, that knowledge is going to be the key to the success of the site 
especially now using solar irrigation because you're going to have an abundance now of water to be able to demonstrate that you can grow a lot more and a lot more different things. So in, in essence, yeah, we, we will be doing like knowledge transfer as we go throughout the whole process of the, of the 687 sites. So for example, uh, which category of farmers are you targeting? Are you targeting the women? Are you targeting the youths? Are you targeting the general population? Yeah, so, so um, it's funny because Makono uh, site was um, a lady called Gladys, the farmer was there. And um, we, we very much want to see more women farmers. But m my interest as well is to really promote farming to the youth. It's so important that the youth today understand that farming is actually cool you can make some really good money and it's sustainable. So by using solar irrigation and using that technology that we bring, I think the youth c should reconsider farming, not being a, uh, a, a, you know, a stigma, if you will, but something that's positive and fun to do and they'll actually see the benefits uh, for their long term and their future. Um, for, for the women farmers, we definitely want to see more women farmers um, and you know, providing them skill sets like we do with the men, men farmers. There's no difference. Um, but we, we, we're, we're encouraging the youth and we're encouraging women to do farming. You know, there is something called the Buy Uganda, Build Uganda. You, you, Uganda is going to be paying off that loan worth 90 million euros, which is some good billions of shillings. Uh, that's taxpayers' money. So, what does the Ugandan get from that contract that we're hit, that we're doing here in Uganda? Um, a lot of the civil works getting done by locals. We're creating a lot of jobs. Nexus Green uh, has created a lot of jobs for the local Ugandans. I'm very proud to say that Uganda has got so much talent. Unfortunately, there's not enough job opportunity. So, as Nexus Green grows, we will be growing with Ugandans to be working with us hand in hand because the skill set is phenomenal. We know there are so many business people who are dealing in solar, solar materials. That it will be batteries, there will be panels. And we've had some of the countries, especially foreign countries, when they're giving loans, you find um, there's something tied to it where they say the materials will all come from maybe the UK. And then, uh, of course, you, the government also meets the cost of shipping all that. Is, is that something likely to happen with this project? So there is conditions with UK export financing. However, with the new OECD rules, OECD rules, should I say, we can go up to 50% of local content. So with this particular contract, we're using a lot of local talent in terms of civil engineers, uh, the subcontractors we use for the installations, uh, a lot of the um, content being you know, cement items that we can get locally. Why would we ship that in and, like you quite rightly said, have the taxpayer pay for shipping on those items? So we, as um, a company, we have to uh, identify what we're buying from which country to fit into the rules of the UK export finance loan. And actually, when we do go for the next round, potentially, and because obviously we want to go to the 3,000 sites, with the new rules of going up to 50%, it just increases materials, it increases workmanship, employment. How do you ensure there is value for money and this money won't in any way or somehow get swindled? With UK export finance and with the government of Uganda as well, they're very stringent on everything. So with UK export finance you go through a lot of due diligence. This, this whole process took nearly two years and what they find is through the processes you have to submit a lot. So we actually did a feasibility, we actually did a value for money study that was submitted and approved by UK Export Finance. That demonstrates that by doing what we're doing, we're bringing a lot of value for money. And that's the way all companies should do when they do any ECA fundings. They have to demonstrate, is it value for money for the country? And we demonstrated that as Nexus Green. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you.